Good morning, folks. It is Wednesday morning. I'm going to come together this morning and read 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. This is the last chapter in Thessalonians that we're reading together. Um, so for the next two days, uh, we will do something different. Uh, and then we're, we're back in lockdown again come Friday, but we're still, still going to do Bible reading on Friday. Uh, and then hopefully we're getting back into some sort of normal pattern for Christmas time. But let's come together this morning as we read this chapter. It's 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we ask you to pray for us. Pray that the Lord's message will spread rapidly and be honoured wherever it goes, just as when it came to you. Pray too that we will be rescued from wicked and evil people. For not everyone is a believer. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. And we are confident in the Lord that you are doing that you are doing and will continue to do the things we commanded you. May the Lord lead your hearts into a fuller understanding and expression of the love of God and the patient endurance that comes from Christ. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we give you this command in the name of our Lord Jesus. Stay away from all believers who live idle lives and don't follow the tradition you, they received from us. For we know that you ought to um, imitate us. We are not idle when we were with you. We never accepted food from anyone without paying for it. We worked hard day and night so we would not be, burdened, be a burden to any of you. We certainly had the right to ask you to feed us, but we wanted to give you an example to follow. Even while we are with you, we gave you this command. Those unwilling to work, will not get to eat. Yet we hear that some of you are living idle lives, refusing to work and meddling in other people's businesses. We command such people and urge them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and work to earn their own living. As for the rest of you, dear brothers and sisters, never get tired of doing good. Take note of those who refuse to obey what we say in this letter. Stay away from them so they'll be ashamed. Don't think of them as enemies, but warn them as you would a brother or sister. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you his peace at this time and in every situation. The Lord be with you all. Here's my greeting in my own handwriting, Paul. I do this in all my letters to prove that they are from me. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Another interesting chapter um, where Paul puts out a couple of pleas, one to pray for him. Um, we all do the same, don't we? We ask each other to pray for ourselves, to pray for us, um, to keep us strong and to keep us walking with the Lord. And that's what it's about here. It's about praying for God's strength to stand up against evil. Because we do live in a world that's full of evil, a world that doesn't want us to succeed in following Christ. Um, that's because Satan rules the earth. You know, so it is going to be a struggle for us once we start to follow Jesus. So whenever you're having those struggles, don't be afraid or don't be ashamed to admit to them. Let others know. Let somebody who you trust know and let them pray for you. Pray for you as intelligently as possible. So tell them exactly what's going on. Tell them what the struggles are. So whenever they pray, they can name that to God and just ask God to give you the strength to carry on. Because the other thing, it's about keeping going and carrying on. The other thing which is interesting is about the laziness in this passage. Those people who don't want to work, but who want to exploit really the system that's been set up to, to look after one another. If you think about Paul going out to the Gentile churches and the, the, the struggle that went on between Jew and Gentile and then after the council in Jerusalem, what they said that they should tell the believers to do, which was to, you know, to look after one another, to um, follow what... Jesus taught in looking after those who can't look after themselves, feed the widows and the orphans. Um, you know, so it's obviously some people want to exploit that. 
Some people want to be lazy and, as Paul puts it, wants to met, they want to meddle in the affairs of others. So it goes back again to the, the parable of Jesus whenever he said, you know, don't try and take the speck out of your brother's eye whenever you've got a plank of wood sticking out of your own. You know, we've got enough going on with our own lives to, to not interfere with other people's lives. So take it to heart, you know, keep your head down. Um, work can be different things. Work, yes, physical, physical work where you're able to earn a living. Um, but it's also the work around the church. We often say about how 90% of the work is done by 10% of the people. And yet so many other people are very willing to, to, to chip in and to criticise and to tell people how to do it better. But they won't do the work themselves. You know, we, we need to take ownership. We need to actually get involved. We need to be part of the family where we do actually work together. So, like I've often said, and so many others that people have said, if everybody in church took one thing to get really involved in, how it would change the face of church. How it would change how we do things and the response and the outlook. You know, it would completely transform things. So yeah, let's take the the word of Paul and let's hate it. Let's, let's get involved. Let's work. Um, and let's get our hands dirty together, as we say. But it's, it's lovely to see Paul as he signs off that letter in his own handwriting. He wants the people to know that he has he has written it, or he's, at least he's dictated it, so that it can be written. And he's writing a final greeting, a personal greeting to those people. And that's the thing about God's word. It is personal to us. You know, it speaks to all of us in our own situations and in different ways. Um, but the the way you, you, you understand that is to, to read it, to listen to it. In the early church days, it would have been read out. Not everybody could read. And you read, it was read out and you listened, about, you listened to it and you would have discussed it together. A bit like the way we would do small groups in church. Um, and that's, and that, that's how we learn together. You know, it, it is to do that. So I know it's, it's slightly different at the minute, but can I encourage you on a Wednesday night to link in to the Bible study? It's on tonight at half seven. We've been working our way through Hebrews. If you want to catch up on it, if you haven't seen it, it's, it's on our, our Facebook page. It's on YouTube as well. You can, you can watch it. Um, and if you have any questions, please send them to me um, so I can engage with you over that and we can discuss, okay, in a different way, but at least we can learn together. Because I learn as well as we do this. That's the wonderful thing about God's word. We never stop learning. God constantly wants to teach us. So today, I don't know what you're up to, but let's approach this day in an attitude that this is a day that God has given to us, a day when we can read his words uh, and that we can pray for one another, a day whenever we can learn from his word and grow closer to him. So let me pray uh, before we start this day. Father, thank you again for your word this morning. Thank you again for the encouragement that it brings, how we can encourage one another for praying for one another, but also the challenges it brings about how we work and how we um, put our efforts and energy into all that we do. Lord, just again, this day, help us to do that. Put our efforts into what we're doing. And Lord, in this time, help us to pray for one another in an intelligent way. Help us to be interested in one another, not nosy, but genuinely interested in our friends in church and those who are around us, so that we can pray for them and bring them closer to you and just uphold them to you. So, Lord, give us that insight and that wisdom, we ask. Go with us now, today, um, in all that we do, for it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining in this morning. Great to see you. Uh, great to see the names pointing up on the screen. Uh, take care and God bless and see you again soon. Bye.